am Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and I'm here today with Catherine Ryan Howard. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome and today we are talking about all things self-publishing because Catherine has a new book out, Self Printed 2.0. Hello Catherine, tell us a bit about you and your books. I first self-published two years ago, um, almost two years ago. And the first thing I did was Mousetrapped, which was a travel memoir, and I self-published it because I tried to get it published, and I kept getting the same rejection everywhere, which was, we like it, but there's no market for it. Um, and just at that time, I had found out about Lulu.com and CreateSpace.com, and I was about to find out about eBooks. So I thought, I may as well publish it, and even if I sell 100 copies, it's better than leaving it in a drawer. And it will keep me in coffee while I try to get published, which two years later I'm still trying to do. Um, so then, because that went really well, I ended up uh, publishing another travel memoir called Backpacked, and now I've just updated my self-publishing guide, which was of course the, you know, obligatory thing to do next, uh, self-printed. And uh, I've read uh, a bit of your books, and you're very funny. I try to be. So, I mean, I'm fascinated by that because I'm just, I can't seem to write humour. Tell me, how do you do that? Really, it's just the stuff that happens to me um, because I end up putting myself into situations that <laughs> I, I shouldn't be in. Like when I went backpacking, I should really never have gone backpacking. I love, you know, boutique hotels and room service and luxury. And then I was in a, you know, flea infested hostel in Central America, miles from civilization. So I don't really, you know, it's, I really write the way I talk. Um, I think, you know, if you've met me or you've heard me and you read my book, you can, it's just like I'm talking to, or I hope it is. I hope it reads like that. So I don't really try and be consciously funny or, you know, it, it's, I'm just telling what happened. Your book is called Self Printed, mm -hmm. which I think is hilarious because personally, I don't care about print anymore. <laughs> I don't publish in print. So I want to know why should people still bother with print? Well, I don't know if they should. Uh, the reason I called it self-printed first day was uh, because I wanted to differentiate uh, self-publishing from publishing. Because when I started self-publishing, I knew that all I was doing was creating the book. I wasn't, you know, marketing it or doing all the things a publishing house would consider publishing. I had just done one part and now I needed to do everything else after that. So that's where self-printed came from. To be honest, with my next book, ebook first, and then maybe a paperback afterwards. Um, I mean, all my books at the moment are available in CreateSpace paperback POD, but it's a lot of work, and really, it's just for me. And you know, my ebook sales are probably 95% plus. Um, the only book I think should be in paperback is self printed because it's so long. And when you're using it as a reference, you might actually want, you know, to be flicking back and forth with it and stuff. Um, but I think I'm getting to the stage myself where a paperback is just, it's too much work. And as much as I love getting the box of proof copies and it's so exciting, you know, really the businesswoman has to, you know, say you're just doing this for your own your own satisfaction. I'm glad you said that because I think <laughs> I think everybody has to print one of their books. Yeah, you have to get it out of your system. Yeah, yeah. because you want to do that. But then yeah. you realise, like you say, it's a there's a business side of things. Yeah, and like I used to say, you know, it's really not that much extra work um, to do the interior file for Create Space. And it's really that not you know not much more money to get the full paperback, but actually when you think about all the additional time you spend on it and linking your Amazon um, editions and you know you're doing it for the tiny minority who it's either a paperback or nothing and really hmm. you know it's not worth it I don't think I'm getting to the stage where I think it's not worth it and also I, I'm interested whether you know of any examples of indies who've actually made a lot of money with print on demand I do not no <laughs> <laughs> all the success stories are ebooks yeah it's just easier as well, like if, you know, one of the big things actually that ebooks has in terms of an advantage is if you need to update it, if you need to, you know, update it, it's so much, it's so much easier to just update the ebook. Whereas with the POD, you have to upload to new interior, you have to check it, you know, it's just, it's much more time, it's much more work. Ebooks are the future. <laughs> 
<laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Ebooks are my present. <laughs> Print books may be my future, you know, in the, with yeah. traditional. But well, I that's just, the yeah. thing. Like, it's, you have to be, I think, traditionally published. You have to have, um, you know, a wide distribution network. And just POD does not work with bookshops. It just doesn't. It can't because it can't um, accommodate the discount for the retailer and the distributor. So, you know, if if, if I was a self publisher starting out, I would just focus entirely on ebooks. I wouldn't worry about it. What are people still getting wrong about self-publishing? How long is a piece of string? <laughs> okay, give, give me three things. Um, okay, covers. Because um, I don't know if you ever see Joel Freelander's uh, The Book Designer. He has his ebook cover awards, which I didn't win again this month. <laughs> They're so funny. They're funny. Um, my favourite one this month, there was a cover and it's... Uh, Somebody's canvas. Yes, and he said you were right the first time. Oh my God. Um, if you want to see proof that people are still making cover design mistakes, you just need to look at these submissions. Now also, it shows you that some people are getting it amazingly right, because some of those covers are better than what you would see a publishing house or you know, a, a professional book uh, jacket designer produce. There, some of them are amazing, but some of them are not. And I don't quite understand how the authors can look at them and think that, that looks like the books I see when I go into a store or that looks like the best sellers on the ebook list or anything like that so covers would be a very big thing because I think you may be a fantastic writer but that's not to say cover design is an entirely different school of talent and just because you wrote the book does not mean you can design a cover for it and it almost almost always means you shouldn't design the cover for it and um, get a professional because that is the first impression you know I think the cover and the price and then reviews you know that's the way people look and the cover tells someone so much about your book and if your cover is a stinky pile of whatever then chances are they're not, they're not I agree with you I think I think that's definitely the number one uh, what else um, I think thinking you're going to be rich by next week is probably the other big mistake that they continue to make you know, it takes so much hard work. I really worked hard for a full year just to get above 100 copies a month. You know, I was selling 100 copies a month for a year um, and then things took off. So if I had started, you know, crying any stage before then, it's why is it my book selling? And, you know, it takes an awful lot of hard work. And yes, there are people who do nothing. They don't tweet, they don't blog, they upload their book and they sell a thousand copies their first week. And that is great for them and we're not at all jealous. But <laughs> you cannot uh, model yourself on what are exceptions to the rule. So I think believing you're going to be, that ebooks are easy, you upload them, instant bestseller, and not being prepared for the work that actually should go into it, I think that's also a big mistake that self-publishers continue to make. Like when you talk to some self-publishers about editing, they take it as an insult. Um, I think that a lot of self-publishers don't quite understand what editing is because it's not making your book better, even though sometimes that is a byproduct. Um, it's about bringing your book up to a minimum standard, and if you're going to put a price tag on it, then it has to do what a book should do and that does not mean you know I think a lot of self-publishers maybe don't understand what editing is it's not something that Microsoft Word spell check can do for you <laughs> it's you know a professional qualification it's people who have years of experience who've learned you know things about the English language that you may not know yourself um, you know I always say to self-publishers you can look at a book a million times but you don't know what you don't know so how can you find a mistake if you aren't even aware that you've made it um, and you know self-publishers sometimes say well I'm only charging 99 cents I'm only charging it doesn't matter any amount of money at all even if your book is free it should be yeah edited, I think so your book's brilliant because it's got like how to publish and everything but actually I'm quite bored of talking about that now. <laughs> it's like yeah yeah go and upload it to yeah. whatever. I mean there's no secret to how to self-publish if the information is there and yeah. everyone has to follow the same. And basically yeah, people can buy your book and it will teach them how to get their book published but the process is basically the same for every book. Yeah. What is 
different and what I find fascinating is their marketing side of things. Mm -hmm. um, what have you found? Because you write non-fiction, funny memoir, is that kind of your... Yeah, we can go with that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> funny <laughs> memoir. Um, how have you been marketing your books and what's been successful? Well, I really think blogging is the, the big thing for me, but it's easy for me to sell my books through blogging because it's the same voice. You know, if you read a blog post of mine, it's written in pretty much exactly the same way as my memoirs are, you know, it's, it's the same voice. I'm not sure what I would have done if I was trying to market fiction. Um, but blogging for me has been the big thing. And then Twitter, because it drives traffic to the blog, but also it's fantastic for networking, for meeting other writers. I'm meeting you today because of Twitter. Um, you know, I think like those would be the two for me. And, and then just Facebook, because there's ready-made groups of interested readers on Facebook, just waiting for you to say, here's a book you might like. Um, so I would say social media has been the big thing for me. But I think it's really all got to its imagination, like how many ways can you think of to market your book? Like your job is to get people to find out it exists. And if you can manage that, then, you know, you're doing well. And you, you mentioned Facebook there. I love Twitter. You know, as you say, we met on Twitter. I, I'm good at Twitter. I'm terrible at Facebook. I'm pretty terrible at Facebook. <laughs> but, but why do you find that? Why do you find that so good? How? Do well, you it's it? good for me because, uh, like, Mouse Trapped is about a specific thing. Okay, it's about Disney and it's about Orlando and it's about, let's we'll say, gap years. So I do find it easy to find readers on Facebook because what tends to happen is a Disney fan will read it and like it. Um, and then we'll, they are already friends with lots of other Disney fans on Facebook so then they post it or they like my page and they say hey check out this book so I find it very useful if your book is about a specific thing and you think there is fans of, or people who are interested in that thing on Facebook but again for fiction I'm not sure it works the same way your, your self-printed book, it's pretty awesomely long and chock full of information and it I seems to have got bigger with the yes. second edition. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm fascinated. What is, what is the extra info that maybe I don't know about? Well, there's a few things that are different in this new edition. I mean, KDP Select didn't even exist the first, when the first one came out, so I had to put that in there. That's only about an extra couple of thousand though. Um, but the one thing that's in is not that wasn't in the first edition is my not so scientific theory of how to sell self-published books oh sounds good <laughs> it sounds good i i don't know <laughs> it might be uh you know heightening your expectations there but um it's because i've been able to look back now over the last two years and see okay this happened because of this this happened because of this and i think really you know especially when you come to use social media it seems very daunting but actually what you're doing and what i discovered i was doing was just finding my first readers so you the book comes out you can't go from there to you know amazon algorithms and climbing up the charts and all that you need a group of supporters who buy your book when it comes out now i'm not saying get them to buy it at 4 p.m. on a Tuesday altogether so you artificially raise your uh, bestseller ranks. I just mean in those first weeks and months, the people who are buying the book, not necessarily because of what the book is about, but because of you, because they want to support you, they like your voice, they want to see how the book turned out perhaps because you've been blogging about it. And from there, you can then try and multiply that um, and, and then you end up with enough purchasers that you're making a dent in Amazon and that can improve it. So in the new edition of Cell Printed, I sort of lay out the different stages of doing that, which I didn't do in the first one because I hadn't actually figured out that that's what was happening. <laughs> So that's what's that's the extra, you know, sixteen thousand words. Yeah. The second edition. No, I totally agree with you, and that is why I say the number one thing people have to have is a list, so that at the end of your first book, you say, if you like this, sign up yeah. here, and then the second book, you can sell it. And the other thing is that you know, when ten years ago I was on Bebo, and you might say, what the hell is Bebo? Well, Bebo's gone now, long gone, um, but we were all... Like MySpace. You know, exactly, where is MySpace? You know, we can't be sure. I would be very surprised if it's not, but we can't be sure that Twitch will still be here in five years. The only thing we can really count on is email. So I do think from day one, even if you're not sending out newsletters, you have to have your mailing list sign up because that is the only thing that will survive. And it's so much easier to sell a book when you have a ready-made group of people who like the last one and will buy this one too.
I totally agree. So, um, tell us about your travel memoirs uh, and who's going to like them. Tell us a bit about your other writing. People who don't like travelling love them. <laughs> Because you get to uh, travel from the safety of your armchair and you get to, uh, you know, if you suspect that if you ever had to take a horse up the side of an active volcano, you wouldn't like it, uh, you will enjoy having that confirmed for you because I had to do it and I didn't like it. So it's, um, it's more for the people who would like to like to travel, but don't. <laughs> Yeah, kind of, a, it's a humorous take on Yeah, on the it's not like, you know, uh, Paul Thoreau or anything, it's not, uh, you know, it's more <laughs> I went and I really shouldn't have because it wasn't for me, but I got a book out of it. Yeah, but it was a laugh. <laughs> it was a laugh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't do it again, but yeah, it was funny. <laughs> Fantastic. So where can people find you and your books online? Um, well, everything is on Amazon, but for the best thing to do is go to my website, katherineryanhoward.com. Um, and all the information is on there. You can find out more about the books. You can find them on Amazon. And actually, at the moment, um, I'm selling the ebooks of Self Printed Direct to my readers just to see how that goes for a little while. Um, so, all the information is on there. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time, Catherine. Thank you. <laughs>